Hey friends, it's Lauren. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. I'm grateful to have you back with me. I'm going to be showing you my latest Pear Blossom Press project and I have a light up card to share with you today using Pear Blossom Press's One Light. I'll also be using the Stamp and Die Bundle and of course our world's best foam tape all available at the Pear Blossom Press shop. I'm going to be using some of the newer Lawn Fawn goodies today. I'm going to be using different Valentine's kind of themed products here. So let's start with stenciling. I'm going to be using the Lawn Fawn Heart Garden stencil. So I'm using my Waffle Flower Grip Mat and stenciling tools to help me with my blending. I'm going to be using Distress Oxides with my domed foam blenders from scrapbook.com. I'm adding in Lucky Clover into the hill of this little stencil. I like that it's a, I guess technically a layering stencil, but it's all on one. So you can just clean off each section as you use it and continue on with the same stencil. So I have a microfiber cloth and I'm just using a spray water bottle to add water and cleaning off my stencil, making sure it's dry since I am using distress oxides before placing down the three little flower stems um, that I'm going to be coloring in next. I'm bringing out cracked pistachio and I'm going to start by adding that color at the top of my stems. Now I end up covering the middle flower, but at the time of creating this stencil, I wasn't really sure where my hedgehog was going to go. So I am coloring in all three of these flower stems, again with cracked pistachio and then bringing in Lucky Clover at the bottom to blend those two colors together. So the tops of the stems look lighter than the bottom and the bottom will blend in with the hill that I already stenciled. So I went ahead and did the same thing. I cleaned off my stencil, lowered it down so I can add in those three little heart flowers. And for these, I'm going to be using Abandoned Coral Distress Oxide to color them in fully, but I end up adding a little bit of barn door because I wanted to create a two-tone kind of shadow depth and dimension look on these hearts. So just to add a little bit of darkness, I'm going to add in barn door to just add a little bit of that color at the bottom of the heart looking flowers. So I'll go between those two colors and blend till I'm happy and that will finish off our stenciling. So you can see this cute little hill with our adorable heart flowers that were so easy to stencil using the Lawn Fawn Heart Garden stencil. I'm going to use the second largest of the large stitched rectangle stackable lawn fawn dies to cut out that little background. And then I also use the largest from that set to cut a piece of craft cardstock. I'm going to be moving into stamping. So I'm adding a piece of white cardstock and I'm going to add my little porcupine from the lawn fawn porcupine for you add on stamp set and I'm also stamping the cute little cell phone and I'm going to stamp in the crunchy leaf premium dye ink pad from Lawn Fawn which is alcohol marker friendly and it's not as dark as I would like so I'm going to leave my stamps in my misty because I will add another ink on top once I'm all done coloring in my images. I'm using Ohuhu Honolulu B art markers. These are alcohol based markers and the different colors I'm using, I'm doing my best to make sure I have my caps on screen. But if you have these markers yourself, I'm using R150 and R070 for my reds. I'm using BG2 and BG1 for the greens. I found that those colors matched my distress oxide colors best that I use for coloring in through my stencil. The gray on the cell phone is CG030 and CG020. Now for the darkest parts of my porcupine, I'm coloring in the spines, um, or the quills, I guess I should say, and I'm going to be using E460, E450, and E300 to color them in. I know porcupines have like very light tipped quills um, on 
a porcupine. So I'm going to save that lightest color to try to color in the edges of all of my images of the quill spines part of our porcupine to try to give that effect as best as possible. Um, but this image is, you know, up to my imagination. So I think it looks cute regardless of not having it perfectly colored like an actual porcupine. And of course, you can always use whatever you have on hand to recreate this card. I am using Lawn Fun products and I will have everything linked down below in the description in case you would like to um, use the exact same products that I have in this video. Now for the rest of my porcupine, I'm going to use that E300 again. This time it will be the darker color and I'm just outlining and kind of following the shape of the porcupine, adding the darkest color where I think the shadows would look best on my little critter. I don't really have a light source in mind, so the light source would be pretty much what the card receiver is looking at, so the center of the card. So I'm just using that as a guide of where I'm adding the darker color color to create shadow. And then finally, I'm bringing in E280 to fully color in my porcupine. And there is kind of a big jump between 300 and 280. So I'm really going in and doing my best to blend out that harsher line um, or the lines that I created with the darker color. So just take your time and blend those together as much as you like. But you can use any color medium, of course. I think this would look so cute watercolored or with colored pencils. So pick your favorite and color in your adorable little porcupine. Once I'm done blending all of that in, I'm going to bring out E030 to color in the porcupine's ears, nose, and to add cute little cheeks to my sweet little image. And then I thought to give it a little more character, I'm going to bring back in the two darkest colors that I use. So E460 to add a little bit of speckling around the um, quills of the porcupine, and E300 around the, I guess, regular fur of my porcupine. I don't know if that's anatomically correct, but we're going with it. So now I'm putting my images right back into my Misty, making sure that it's placed in the same spot as last time. And then I'm inking up my stamps with a different colored ink. This is Fallen Leaves Versifying Clear ink. And I'm stamping on top of what I've already colored, which I know is very daring, but it turned out perfect. And I'll use the coordinating dies from the Lawn Fawn Porcupine for you add-on to cut out my porcupine. I cut out the phone and I also use the cutout part for the arms or hands, I guess, of a porcupine to be able to hold the cell phone. And you can see how cute those look layered together. So now I'm going to work on the placement of my porcupine on my hill and I'm going to grab my pencil so I know where to mark where I need to hole punch for my one light to shine through and also where I need to stamp the um, interactive sentiment like press here for my card receiver to know that the card will light up. So I went ahead and took out one of my one lights. I'm putting my battery in and of course making sure it works. And I know that I want my one light to be the flash of my cell phone. So I play around with the layout and I settle on adding my hedgehog right to the center. It is covering up that middle flower, but that's okay. And I'm hovering my pencil over where the flash or the camera is of my cell phone. And I added a little mark onto my stenciled background that will be where I need to punch a hole. And then I also need to punch a hole through my porcupine. So kind of figuring out where that hole needs to be on my porcupine. And then I will also put a mark where I need to stamp press here. And for this, I'm going to use one of my sentiments from the Pear Blossom Press Stamp and Die Bundle. And I'm going to use the little push here fancy font, I guess you could say, from the stamp set. So I'm going to very lightly draw a line towards the bottom of my one light and I know that I need to stamp that sentiment above that line. And I did it as light as possible so I could see it and stamp my press here but also be able to go in and erase that line later um, to you know make sure that it's not visible to the card receiver. So I'm just doing my best to make sure 
I erase that line. So my hole punch doesn't fit on my paper, so I'm grabbing a piercing tool and a mat that is made of foam, and I'm just very gently piercing a hole where I marked with my pencil. And then I'm grabbing my hole punch, and this is a tiny little thing. This is about a 1 16th of an inch hole punch, and I punch the camera on my cell phone, and I'm also punching out the uh, little pencil mark that I made on my porcupine. And I'm going to glue my cell phone to my porcupine, just adding a little bit of glue on the center where it will attach to my porcupine in between its body and hands. And I'm going to use my piercing tool to help me make sure I've lined up my hole on the cell phone to the hole on the porcupine. So you can see here, I'm just using it to make sure that they, the two holes are lined up and my cell phone looks cute in the hands of my little porcupine. So once that glue has dried a bit and they are adhered together, now I can glue my porcupine onto my background, lining up those two uh, holes. So again, the holes of my porcupine with the cell phone to the hole uh, that I pierced on my stenciled background. So I'm adding some liquid adhesive as it will give me some time to make sure I get everything lined up and I am I picked this up so I could see through the holes, make sure I was gluing my porcupine in place, and again, using my piercing tool to make sure those holes are lined up. And again, the liquid adhesive gives me a chance to tweak my porcupine and make sure it looks straight, and making sure, again, the holes of all my layers have lined up so my one light can shine through easily. So now that those are all figured out, it's time to mark where I need to adhere my one light on my craft cardstock. So I'm going to center the two layers together and I'm going to use my pencil to mark a hole through the opening of my hedgehog and foam. And then I hovered my pencil where the press here sentiment is so I could make a mark of how I need to angle my one light to make sure that the light is showing through the hole and that the press here lines up with the push button of my one light. I'm using some wide double-sided adhesive. I believe this is an inch wide and just adding that to the back of my one light and I'll peel off the release paper and then I will make sure I have the press button and the LED lined up on my pencil marks and before I really make sure it's nice and secured I'm just going to kind of figure out the placement of my paper and make sure that when I press here it actually activates the one light and the light shines through the opening of my um, my card. So now I'm getting my world's best foam tape and I'm going to completely cover on all four sides of my stenciled background. This tape is repositionable so anytime I don't get it placed just right I can easily peel it off and I also made sure to not put too much in the area where it gets real close to the edge next to the press here so you could see that it was slightly thinner foam tape on that one little section. So now I'm going back and making sure I get off any pencil marks or smeared ink that I got anywhere and I'm also going to use my white gel pen to help with that as well and I'll also add some cute little highlights to my hedgehog or my porcupine. I keep thinking it's a hedgehog but it's a porcupine. <laughs> So after I get my white highlights onto my porcupine and my one light and the pretty much my card is assembled, I'm going to get this on a card base as well as creating a sentiment. So for the sentiment, I thought I would keep it fun by filling in the top of that white part of my stenciled background by using a large word die. This is the giant XOXO long cut, and then I'm also using the thinnest of the Everyday Sentiment Banner long cuts from Lawn Fawn to stamp my sentiment. So I'm going to die cut the XOXO out of some cardstock that I thought matched the hearts pretty well. And then I did the banner out of some green cardstock that I did my best to match up with the green parts of the card. So my XOXO is just die cut. I'm going to add a little bit of ink to it in a moment. But my sentiment I wanted to line up on the banner using my Misty to make sure it's as centered as possible. And I'm going to emboss my sentiment in white. So I am going to stamp the You Prickle My Fancy sentiment. So I added my uh, anti-static powder from Rabbit Hole Designs, and then I'm inking my sentiment twice. I stamped twice with clear embossing ink, and then I will use my 
coffee filter and some super fine white embossing powder to cover my sentiment. And once I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and put the excess back into the container and use my heat gun to melt my sentiment down. So while it's cooling, I'm going to add a little bit of that barn door ink to the very bottom of my sentiment just to have, again, trying to recreate the colors of my stenciled background. So I wanted to use a pink and a red, so the abandoned coral barn door. I just wanted that similar feel on my sentiment. So once I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and use liquid adhesive to glue this to the top of the card. Again, filling in that open space that I have on my stenciled background above my porcupine. So I'll get that centered and placed onto the white cardstock. And then once that is glued and secured, I will grab my You Prickle My Fancy sentiment on the banner. And while there is a lot of dimension already from using the world's best foam tape, I still want to pop up this banner sentiment. So I'm going to use this thinner foam adhesive from scrapbook.com. It's one eighth of an inch thick, so it will fit perfectly behind my banner sentiment. I'll get it placed as best as I can and then I'll pull off the release paper and attach that to the center of my sentiment and trying to make it equal on the left and right sides of the card. That will finish off putting the card together so let's get it onto a white card base. I have a top folding A2 card stock base out of some thick white card stock and I'm using my tape runner to add adhesive on the back of my craft card stock and I attached it to my card base. As you can see, I didn't do a perfect job at scoring it and cutting it at exactly A2 to match up with my rectangle craft die cut. So I'm just using some large scissors to trim off the excess. I wanted to add a little bit of bling just to top it off so I'm grabbing my Trinity Stamps pickup tool as well as these beautiful emerald rhinestone embellishments and I'm using the pickup stick to pick up the different jewels or rhinestones, place them where I like them around the card and then use that pickup stick again to pick them up and glue them down with my adhesive. Here is a close-up look of how adorable this porcupine card turned out. I absolutely love activating the one light so you can see how it looks like he's taking a little picture of you through with his phone. Here are a couple photos so you can see some of the details on this card as well as what it looks like lit up. Again, I just think this cute little porcupine is so adorable and I hope you think it is too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.